You ready to go, buddy? You excited? Look at him, he's ready. He knows what's coming. Ready? Let's go. Yeah. So as you know, I'm the type of guy that I like to keep things simple and doable. Practical, all those, all those good words. In my mind, if I truly know gardening, if I truly know what I'm doing, then I'm gonna be able to explain it in a simple, simple, practical way. Let's go in the barn here. We'll find ourselves a shovel. So let me show you something crazy. My brother made this back in the day. Big Wiggly Worm Company, Josh Meeks. So he was trying to do a worm business, but it didn't really make it very far. But I'm pretty sure that we still have worms in here. Okay, let's see if we can find some worms. Let's see if they're in here still. Appears to be frozen. Let's see. I'm really curious if there's still worms in here. Hey, this is really good worm castings. No, I don't see any worms. So this one did not survive. Let's check another one. Okay, let's see if these guys are alive. Are there any worms in here? Oh yeah, there's worms in here. Look at that. Oops. Look at that. Still worms. See that worm right there? Look at that. There's still worms in there. Little guys, bigger ones. And yet, they've turned this whole thing into really good soil. And yet, guess what? We have not given these worms any food for the past how long, like, probably a good year and a half, two years. That's crazy that they're still alive. That just goes to show to me that, that worms create an ecosystem of a recycling system to where nutrients that are already existent get reused and reused and just improves the soil. I mean, the soil that I'm feeling is like awesome. Hey, Copper, he's coming to pay me a visit over here. Good boy. So. It's crazy how worms, worms have a capacity to bring life into the soil and to help encourage soil life. Even in a situation like this where those buckets literally, we haven't put any water in them, we haven't put any new uh, feed material, and yet they just kept living in there and the soil is actually wet, it's uh, moist. They would have been dried out if there weren't worms in there. So the worms, through the, uh, this, so actually the worms, so actually the worms helped to keep that soil alive and going even in a low input environment. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm gonna keep that bucket and go find another one too. This one's looking like it has an eggshell in it. Let's see what we got here. Not sure, feeling a little more dry. Nope, that one dried out. Oh wow, this one's wet. Wonder why this one's wet. Oh, look at that. Whoa, you can see. You can see there's a worm trying to come out right now. That's crazy. See all the worm castings? Hopefully y'all can see that. See all these little worm castings? All the little pieces of poo? That is what you call worm gold. Hey, worms. This, one, this one's very wet. There's a good healthy worm right there. Wow. This is a very wet bucket. And yet the worm survived in here somehow. Yep, see him there? They're in here, that's for sure. It's too wet for sure. I think there was a leak in the top of the of the building that leaked into here. But you can tell these ones are doing better than these guys over here that were too dry. Here you can kind of see three different uh, levels of moisture. This one's too wet. This one's about right, and that's too dry. So when you're doing worms, worm castings, 
you got to make sure the soil is not saturated like that, otherwise the worms are not happy. But then, you also don't want it to be too dry over here. It's not these shells problem. Those are alright. I mean, those are pretty much decomposed already. They just need to be incorporated back in the soil. But this right here is much healthier, happier soil. They just need to be fed over here with more organic material. See these little guys are so small and thin. If you give them some food, they would thrive. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dump these two into this bucket. Okay, we got that one. Let's look over here. There's a lot of worms in this bin, but I'm not sure exactly where they're at. So this is the same scenario, just haven't been fed a ton of food. But man, they've made this soil so good. I'm already seeing some. We've got one there, one there. They're just all real thin. But if I find a big glob of them, I'll put them in my bucket. See, they're all coming to this food right here. Y'all see them right there? There's one right there, one right here, right here. And these are all red wigglers. A uh, bunch right there. See them all? They're just eating on these potatoes. I'm gonna grab some. Oh, they like those potatoes. Because the potatoes have so much starch in them. So let's go ahead and take these guys. Put them in there. As these potatoes break down and get decomposed, they're slightly warmer than the environment around. So that's another reason the worms like to hang out on the decomposing material. Okay, we've got quite a few worms here now. I'm gonna be doing two things with these worms. Number one is I'm gonna be starting a worm bin, a vermicomposting bin. Uh, that will be in the works as we go towards the spring. Um, in the meantime, I'll just keep them happy in the buckets. And then, another thing is I'm going to be inoculating the entire garden with these worms. Now, I already have worms in the garden, but I want to inoculate with these types of worms. These red wiggler worms are incredible at turning your compost and wood chips and everything else into just wonderful material for your plants. Alright, let's go back. Punk out. One, two. We are ready for worms. It's gonna be awesome. We're back, folks. We're back. We're gonna open this. Get these worm castings out of here. And worms. First off, let's go ahead and inoculate this garden with these worms. Now, like I said, these worms are not just your normal, you know, earthworms. These are red wigglers, so they're more efficient at turning composted material and wood chips and all kinds of food scraps into your garden soil that you're going to be wanting. So it's winter time right now. I don't want these guys to be too cold and to freeze. They're used to it being pretty cold, but I'm going to make sure that wherever I put them, I'm going to put some more mulch on top to make sure and, and uh, insulate so that they don't get too cold. I want them to stay in the garden, so I'm going to go ahead and just put them right in these pathways that already have mulch here, but dig it back and get them to where they're going to be closer to the ground and they can have a plenty of space to move around. Now if you're doing this in your garden in the winter time, make sure and give them some food or, or if you don't have wood chips or compost around, then they need something to eat because really worms are gonna go wherever food is. Pull this back, wood chips, got quite a bit of wood chips here. And then get back to the compost. Probably already other worms here. 
Compost a bit. Yeah, it's looking good there. Take it down and we'll get some of this. Making sure, I want to make sure what I'm putting out here has worms in it. Yeah, there's worms in there for sure. Make a good little pile there. And then cover it back up with the original compost. And then I'll cover all that up with the chips. Go. Simple enough. Right in here is close to where I'll be eventually. Hey, look at there. Found a worm. That tells me that the native worms are very happy right here. So my worms that I'm adding are gonna be awesome. They really like this. Uh, see that browner material right there? That's the is the mushroom compost, and they're gonna love that too. It's good stuff. So let's add some more worms. Yeah, good stuff. Keep those worms. All right. Oh yeah, there's plenty of worms in here. There's one there. They're all in here. Yeah, good stuff. Seal it back up in with the compost first. And then back over top of that with the wood chips. Got a good about four inches of wood chips here. All right, here we go. Grow, worms grow. Let's see, I put some right there, some over there, and some right over there. And now I'm gonna put some right here, just kind of covering the middle of the garden so that they spread out from there and start taking over the whole garden. Worms will follow food. If you ever wanna move worms, just put a source of food and they'll flock to it. I don't know if the flocking is the right word, maybe a squirm or, I don't know, a worm term. Yeah, the worms will squirm to wherever you put the food. These garden border pieces have got all kinds of worms. I mean, see that right there? There's all kinds of worms. We have one, two, three, four, five. We don't have a lack of worms, but the benefit of adding these worms is gonna be that these are a different type of worm that are more efficient and quicker at breaking down the the uh, wood chips and all the all the material I'm adding, so I want to add those in because I know how much of a benefit they're going to have on the garden in the next year or two. You can kind of see where I dug right there, there, and there, and there. Oh yeah, good stuff. And there you go, simple enough. Make sure when you do inoculate your garden with these worms that you go ahead and cover up wherever you put those worms with a food source if you don't have it I already had compost so they're gonna be happy in there but if you don't have much in your garden right now go ahead and put some decomposing material there some kitchen scraps they really like potatoes peels those are good whatever high nutrient source they can have just put it in there bury it all together and they'll be happy for a while they'll start having worm eggs and worm babies and you'll have all the worms you ever want as long as those worms have food wherever you have your garden they're gonna stick around and continue to improve your soil every year. Later on, we're gonna be using the rest of the worms right here. There's still a bunch more in here to do a worm casting bin. I'm gonna show you a quick way to do that. Real fun, real easy. Using materials that you probably have access to. There go. They'll be fine right there. It's moist enough and got plenty of food. I might put some uh, cornmeal on top because they love cornmeal. Other than that, we'll just keep them until we have that worm bin made. Folks, worms are the best. They are the best. Catch you later. See you later, girls. Have a good one. Don't be hurting my worms, please. Grow worms, grow. Oh, yeah.